Hey guys, I hope everybody's doing amazing. I hope you'll be having a wonderful week so far and yeah, that the weather is treating you well. <laughs> because guys, last week here in Toronto, we had the beautiful, beautiful, sunny, warm weather. And now this week, I don't know what's happened. <laughs> it's like rain and cold. and Oh my God, I don't know what's going on. But either way, it gave me hope last week that we're going to have warm weather soon again. And that's all I need to know. Anyways, how is everybody doing? I hope you are all doing amazing. And just a few stories that I didn't get a chance to talk about um, since, uh, you know, we all heard all the amazing news that Megan will be, will not be going to that condemnation. Um, and normal is very normal to us that, you know, Hey, somebody invites you somewhere. You either, uh, one of you go or none of you go or both of you go. It's as simple as that. And Harry and Megan were trying to do, um, the, you know, just to do the easy thing and, the fact that they did what is easier for them uh, has caused the British press and all kind of press and people who can't shut up about Harry and Meghan, you know, that, that has caused them to, you know, go into meltdowns, various meltdowns. Anyways, <laughs> I love to see it, though. I just love to see it. Anyways, guys, um couple stories that I didn't get a chance to talk about yet and I just wanted to put my little two cents in there um let's see here now um uh let's see let's see let's see so now um there's talking about um um you know the coronation um and oh um I saw this headline saying that there's a <laughs> just because um that that um, King Charles III has, um, you know, he put out some picture, uh, some souvenir that has Harry and Meghan on there. Um, they're calling it an olive branch. How is that an olive branch? <laughs> That's what I would like to know. Anyways, just because there's a picture that has Harry and Meghan in it, I don't see how that's an olive branch, but there you go. Um, and then there's this crazy story about how Kate resents Megan because, um, you know, after the queen had passed, um, you know, that cruel man, that is Harry's father, he t said to Harry, hey, don't bring Megan because, uh, oh, Kate's not coming and, and all this stuff and don't bring her. That's what he said. He said, don't bring her. He didn't use her name. Sorry. He said, don't bring her. And... Harry was like, don't speak about my wife like that. And then he was like, oh, you know, don't worry. Um, you know, it's just because Kate's not coming and blah, 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 blah. He had all kind of excuses. And, you know, and now there's some silly ass story um, about Kate resents Megan because she didn't get a chance to, to be there when the queen was passing. Right. Um, yeah. Like if Kate was that close to to um, that queen. I'm pretty sure, you know what, just from what I've seen, and I don't have, I, I just go by what I've seen, it didn't look like if they were that close either. It looked like if, to me, the, honestly, in my opinion, it looked to me like if the queen really did appreciate Megan. Seems like if she kind of admired Megan a little bit. And she kind of like, was kind of rooting for Megan. That's what I believe. The queen, I mean, from what we saw, I mean, when we saw her um, with Megan at that, you know, when she did take her on that, um, that the train ride with her and they spent, I don't know, a couple days or whatever it was together. I thought that she really seemed to enjoy Megan's company. And, you know, it seemed like if they were giggling a lot and, and the queen, I don't think she would have done that with any and everybody. No, she wouldn't. I think she really was impressed with Harry's decision to bring Meghan um, and to marry her. Um, I really do believe that she was very, very, um, what is the word, uh, impressed that Harry, this is, what, this is who Harry found to marry. I think she was really impressed with Harry. <laughs> and 
you know, for, cho- for, for, for choosing someone like Megan to marry, you know, and when, you know, the way how the queen was so happy and, um, she really seemed to in, like enjoy Megan's company and she seemed to enjoy the fact that Megan was a feminist and Megan stood for a lot of things. It seems like half, um, as like, like I said before, the other women in the, that married into the family, like Kate and, and, um, Kabila and, uh, and, and the other one, um, Ford Fiesta, I forget her name, Sophie, I guess the Sophie Ford Fiesta lady, they were very salty about Megan being so close to the queen. That's what I believe. That's what I believe guys. Anyways. So yeah. So <laughs> either way, um, I, I can't see why Kate would re- be resenting Megan for a decision that, um, that, you know, that Harry's father made. I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyway, so that's the headline. That's one of the headlines in the news today about Megan, about Kate resented Megan because of that. And I'm like, I really don't believe. And there were so many stories that came out, honestly, about um, the queen thinking that Kate was lazy and all that. She did not appreciate Kate that much. She knew Kate for like 20 years, guys. Kate was hanging around when, from the time they were in high school. You know, Kate's been hanging around that family from then. The queen did not appreciate Kate. I, I, I'm going to go on the limb and say that. Because she, when, did she, when did her and Kate go on any particular... Um, um, they probably went on things together, but she didn't take her like for a two-day trip or however long that trip was that she took with Megan. And she barely knew Megan then. But she appreciated Megan and she saw what Megan stood for. And she... And I think she really, you know, I think that was just a great thing. Anyways, guys, I don't want to keep talking about this particular thing. I actually wanted to get on to some other stuff that has been going on. Um, So I don't know if um, you guys uh, saw this story. Uh, you know what? And I did see um, um, a couple of people were talking about it. A couple of other um um, squatty channels were talking about it. And this is this report in the guardian about the jewelry, the missing jewelry says here, official jewelry gifts to Royals worth 80 million are not in national collection. The palace refusing to explain why official state gifts worn by princess of Wales, the real princess of Wales (laughs) and, and Camilla are not in the Royal collection. And I think when they say the Princess of like, this is very confusing. Who are they talking about? Are they talking about Diana, the real Princess of Wales, or are they talking about Kate? I, like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, so it's here. Buckingham Palace is refusing to explain why 11 pieces of jewelry potentially worth 80 million that were official gifts to the royal family are not, are not held in the trove of national heritage. The jewels, which have been worn by Queen Elizabeth II, and the Camilla and, you know, and Catherine. Okay, okay, now I get it. Now they're talking about Kate. Okay, cool. They are not contained in the Royal Collection, the custodian of culturally significant items held in the trust for the nation. <laughs> the pieces include a set of aquamarine jewelry, four brooches, and six necklaces, including an extraordinary Cartier necklace of emeralds and brilliant cut diamonds worth at least 40 million given to the late queen by an Indian prince. Wow. (laughs) 40 million. Wow. So basically, and you know, the funny thing about it is the reason why I'm actually talking about this guys today is because nobody in the actual um, news, none of them are really talking about this. They're not. They're not shining a light on this and I know a couple of the squatty channels have been talking about it and I am going to amplify it some more here and talk about it Um, because you know what in 10 years from now maybe somebody will be flipping through some channels on YouTube or some other you know whatever maybe it will be YouTube I don't know but either way they will be flipping through and this video here that I'm making right now might show up you never know and you know they will find out about this because you know, the, the media doesn't really highlight these kind of stories, but they would definitely highlight a story about, um, Jabba the, Jabba the, 
<laughs> or Jabo or whatever the hell they call him. You know, Jabo. They will highlight a silly story in Jabba's book or Jabo's book, right? About Kate um, resenting Megan or Kate, um, you know, thinking that walking next to Megan is the hardest thing she's ever had to do. Like, they would highlight a story like that, which is like, you know, Jabba's, uh, is in Jabba's book or whatever Jabba's doing. They'll do that, but they wouldn't highlight something like this. That is actual, that it, this is something that's, this is an actual story here. This is an actual story. This is not hearsay. It's not junk. It is an actual story and they're not talking about it. Let me move on. Let me um, talk a little, little bit more here about this stuff here. Okay, so at least four of the items were presented by heads of state. Um, the, the palace's policy states that as a general rule, gifts to the sovereign from any monarch or head of state automatically become part of the royal collection, a body that manages items held by the sovereign in a trust for the nation. Yeah, for the nation, but the nation never really gets to, uh, you know, the, the nation has to pay to see it, first thing. <laughs> this is a long and short of the story. And the nation will never really be benefiting from this. I don't, anyways, let me, just, let me just move on. The Royal Collection Trust, which manages the collection, confirmed that it does not have custody of the 11 jewels. A Buckingham Palace um, spokesperson declined multiple invitations to explain the current ownership of the 11 pieces. They suggested the royals do not regard the jewelry as their private property and that the items which were given to the Queen, to the late Queen between 1947 and 1979, may in the future be added to the Royal Collection. It may be. And it says here, it goes on, official gifts are not the personal property of the, mem of the members of the royal family who receive them, but may be held by the sovereign in right of the crown or, you know, it's a whole bunch of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. And, you know, the funny thing is, and I heard about that, that um, Angela Kelly lady, um, she's having a lot of problems right now. <laughs> I think, I, I don't know if she lost her job. I don't know. I think she lost her job because she was the person who dealt with all the queens, a lot of the queens um, jewelry and stuff like that. She was, I think she was one of the queen's handmaidens. <laughs> but um, she, ha she, and we saw, we saw in the book, um, Harry's book, Spare, she gave Megan a really hard time when they were trying to get the tiara for uh, Megan to do the fitting for her dress, right? Because the queen said, the queen told Megan, hey, make sure that you try that before the day of the wedding because it could be kind of hard, um, you know, to put the tiara on. It's not something you just put on your head. It's not like the one I bought from the, the $5 store. <laughs> Guys, I have a $5 tiara that I bought. Like, listen, it's not that way. It's not like that when you just plop it on your head and maybe you, you might use a, like a, something to, to stick it in there, like a, I don't know, like a hairpin or something. You can't do that with an actual tiara that has actual diamonds and, and, and jewels in it that is heavy. So she wanted, Megan wanted to um, practice, um, you know, how, what to do and, and how it would feel and how heavy it would be, all that thing, all those things. And that woman acted like if she was guarding it like, you know, like guarding the queen's jewelry from Megan. <laughs> and then I remember all those stories that used to come out about um, William doesn't want Megan to wear any of the jewelry uh, from the from from the from the queen and from the royal family and and all this stuff. And I used to hear all this stuff, you know, all these things, all these horrible things, making it seem like half the first woman of color in that family was looking to steal the the goddamn stolen jewelry. The jewelry is already stolen, so what? You think Megan's gonna steal it back and take it back to Africa and India? Is that what is going on here? Did they think that Megan was gonna steal it back and take it to its rightful owners? <laughs> much as I love Megan, much as I love Megan, guys, I don't think Megan is gonna do that. She's not that gangster. No, she's not. She's not that gangster. I, me personally, I would steal all the jewelry back and I would take it back to its rightful owner. But you know, Megan is not. You know, she's not gonna do that. <laughs> but seriously, I don't know. They, like, it's just funny to me that they were trying to make it seem like if Megan is going to do something with the jewelry. And now they're the, they're the ones who seem to be hiding the jewelry. 
Where all the where all the jewelry? There's eighty million dollars in worth of jewelry. Where the hell is it? Where the hell is it? I'd like to know. Did they sell them? Did y'all sell them, royal family? Did y'all mi mistakenly, you know, with all those bags of money that, that that King that King Charles III he walks around with bags of money, you know, that he gets from other, um, you know, whoever he gets them from, <laughs> right? <laughs> did he by chance? Did did um. You know, that king, did he, I don't know, did he sell them? I'd like to know. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so that's, that's that with the jewelry thing. And also, guys, the, you know, King Charles's, um, coronation, right? The security, listen, the guy, listen, guys, the security is going to be off the chains <laughs> because they think that people are that it says here, King, King Charles the third's coronation, security fears as cops profile groups plotting sabotage they are so paranoid that they <laughs> and it says here this is the biggest security operation in the in a generation and it will be mounted at the car at the coronation <laughs> amid fears of attacks police say eco warriors terrorists <laughs> are anarchists are <laughs> are in danger are a danger sorry Ex-head of Royal Protection, Di Davy said, the threat is as big as it has been in 50 years. Security chiefs are battling against an unprecedented number of threats from the T people. I don't want to say that again. You know those is people? Anarchists or anarchists and eco warriors <laughs> looking to disrupt the event. Listen, listen, if I was living in that country, I would totally be out there with a big banner saying Diana. I would say Diana. I would wear Diana shirt, Diana hat. I would wear everything Diana. I would. I would. Because, you know, it's a, this is a big farce. It's a big farce. It's a waste of money. There's a lot of people in that country that are, you know, can't heat their homes. They are going to food banks and they can, you know, and they don't want to pay the nurses. Like, guys, it's a whole lot of trouble that this country is going through. And I don't live there, so I don't talk about it much. But it's a lot of things that they are going through. And this silly ass man is trying to hold... And then they have all these carriages and they want to go in a carriage and they're going to go up one street and come down the same street, go up the street and come back down and, and wave at people like, oh my God, it's a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of crap. <laughs> and anyways, like, so, so basically the car, the condemnation is a mess and that's long and short of the story anyways. But yeah, but, but you knew that you knew that anyways, anyways, guys. I just wanted to give you a couple stories here, um, guys. <laughs> it, it will be a daily event here. Uh, you know, it will be a daily event talking about this. And it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a total mess. But anyways, guys, I appreciate you guys coming through. Um, thanks so much to all the people who always um, come through and always, you know, just all the people who, you know, um, come they they you know and and also the people who are um members of my channel um let's see um let's see here uh like okay the yeah the channel members i have um gone down but it's rare Raquel, church nally mrs s cookies and cream and lydia washington member for 13 months so so um a couple people have um um not re um did not, they didn't re rejoin. So it's okay. I, you know, it is what it is. It's a hard time for a lot of people. So I understand. But anyways, um, guys, if you've sent any super chat, super stickers, um, I appreciate it so much. Um, the last person who sent me a super chat was Carol Lunn. I appreciate it so much. And Lydia Washington, she sent it for my birthday. Thank you so much, Lydia. And yeah, guys, thanks so much for coming through. Thanks to the, um, the moderators of the channel thanks so much guys and i appreciate it so much you guys are amazing and please do remember to go over to my new channel thrive with live p and give it a follow trying to get to like a thousand subscribers but you know it's a slow process <laughs> and uh yeah anyways guys have a great one i'll talk to you soon bye